This is a reply to Weihard's video What's up with noise. Her video deals with the topic quite well and I can't consciously do A440. So I will expand a little on the science and mathematics of sound. I will derive the equation for a sound wave and calculate the speed of sound. Sound is a longitudinal wave, that means it propagates in the same direction as the particles oscillate. Imagine a section of air in equilibrium. The ends should be located at Z and Z plus DZ, and the cross section should be A. The air pressure at both ends is P0. When the sound of your viola propagates, it displaces the section of air. To measure this displacement, we use the function zeta of z and t. Consequently, the new ends of the section are located at z plus zeta of z and z plus dz plus zeta of z plus dz. The function zeta of z plus dz can be expressed as zeta of z plus the partial derivative of zeta with respect to z times dz. Because the derivative is a linear approximation, this is correct for very short lengths. It's easy to find that d zeta over d z times d z is how much the right boundary moves compared with the left. Thus the change of volume is a times d zeta over d z times d z. The wave equation is basically an equilibrium of forces. Because force and pressure are inextricably linked, we need to get a handle on the pressure at both ends of the given section of air. At equilibrium the pressure is uniformly p0. As your concerto serves the air, we have already seen that the volume of our given section changes. The change of volume is proportional to a change of pressure. If we now define the total pressure at the left boundary as P, it consequently follows that the total pressure at the right boundary becomes P plus dP. As hopefully everyone knows, a reaction causes an equal and opposing reaction. Hence the change of pressure results in the force we want to determine. We cancel P and get F equals A times minus dP. Next we expand minus dP with an integral of the derivative with respect to dZ. Now we need to take a closer look at the change of pressure. The sound wave constantly compresses and expands the air. When air is compressed it heats up and consequently it cools when it expands. This interrelation of temperature, pressure and volume is called an adiabatic process. For an ideal gas, pressure times volume to the power of the adiabatic exponent is constant. After a bit of juggling with the terms, we differentiate with respect to P. Then we substitute the constant by pressure to the power of the adiabatic exponent times volume and simplify. Finally, we substitute the change of volume by its expression to get the value for dP. We go back to the force equation and substitute dP by this expression. This gives us the second derivative of zeta. Further, we need to replace the differential dz. The volume for our given section is A times dz. We know that density is mass divided by volume, and because the volume we consider is infinitesimal, the mass must also be infinitesimal. We transpose this to get an expression for substituting dz. Finally, we solve the integral for an interval from 0 to m. From Newton's law of motion we know that a force also equals mass times acceleration. An acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time, and likewise velocity is the derivative of distance. But we already know that distance is represented by the function zeta. Thus we only need to compare both forces and arrive at the wave equation. Now we take a closer look at the structure of the function zeta. Imagine a wave that propagates along the z-direction. Let's consider a displacement of the amplitude f of 0 from point 0 to z. But the amplitude at the z-coordinate should be a function of z. Thus we expand f of 0 with z minus z. We already know that the distance equals velocity times time. So to arrive at the function zeta, we merely substitute the second z by v times t. You are probably itching to substitute the zeta function in the wave equation, so we calculate the second derivative of zeta with respect to both z and t and call the tune. We can cancel the functions and arrive at the equation for the speed of sound. The adiabatic exponent for air is 7 over 5. The pressure at sea level is about 10 to the power of 5 pascal and the density is 1.3 kg per cubic meter. 
Type that into a calculator and we get 328 meters per second, which is the speed of sound.